Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this blood typing thing. And to do that, I want to draw it. Because how many of you understand blood types? Before we go into this blood typing paper, I need to explain blood types. It's called ABO blood typing. So, you have three blood groups you can be. So, you can be A. Everyone knows A. You can be B. You can be AB. Or you can be O. And then with each of these, you can be positive or negative. This is called the RH factor or rhesus factor. These ones here are carbohydrates. These ones are proteins. We're kind of just going to be focused on the major blood groups. Blood typing is an example of a genetic feature called codominance. Codominance is when both partners dominate. Just as a, a background here, remember you get one chromosome from your mother, one chromosome chromosome from your father. So if we draw little chromosomes here, one from the mother, one from the father, let's say the A type here is green and the B type is orange. So this individual would then be AB. Boom. So that's what AB is. It One doesn't cancel out the other. This is what the codominance is right there, uh, where they are both presented. So if we were to draw these red blood cells, they would have the A antigens, which I'm going to draw as little triangles or little, these are triangles, trust me. And then the B antigens are these little round blobs right here. So all these red blood cells, so this here is a red blood cell or I'll write RBC. This individual's blood all has these little antigens sticking off. Now, if we're talking about positive or negative, they would have a different protein sticking off as well. So either having the protein or not having a protein. And then the way this works now, this is a carbohydrate. So this is actually a, a little chain of carbohydrates right here. And the difference between A and B is like this little branching that occurs at the end. One has a branch and the other one might just go like this. I don't remember which one branches and which one doesn't branch right there. But let's say this one's A and this one's B. And then O, what makes O? So boom, boom, boom. This one has no branching. So imagine these as these little structures sticking off here. So these little branches represent an A group, a B group, or an O group. O is actually most common because it's the one that's been around the longest. And then A is second most common. And then B, they think evolved later or in a different part of the world. So AB is actually the least common blood type. So now that's just a little bit about the genetics of this and how we test for it now. So again, you can be these different combinations and it represents this. So if you, so B type is gonna have these and then this one, A. And again, I'm drawing the antigens, then O has no antigens on it. So these are the four ways your red blood cells could come. Now, why do you accept one blood type and why do you not accept another blood type? What have we talked about a lot when talk, having these coronavirus discussions so far? Talked a lot about these things called antibodies. So when your body, let's say we're AB, if you were to make antibodies that would tag, remember an antibody has these components to it. Oh, I drew it backwards, but remember this is an immunoglobulin, an IgG. These antibodies, these variable regions on these antibodies tag specifically to either the A or the B antigen. Remember these are antigens right here. I should label this as the antigens that stick off the surface of your red blood cells. So these antibodies and label those antigens. And if they were to label them, it marks them for your immune system to come destroy them and eat them. In this case, it actually clumps them all together in a process called agglutination. So it actually just clumps them together. And that's actually how they do this blood testing. So you would get a microscope slide, you would put your drop of blood on it, and then you put your anti serum on it. So here, if you were a blood type and you dropped the anti A serum on it, meaning it had the antibodies for the A type, it would cause it to clump. And that would be a positive result for A. If it clumped for both A and B, it would be a positive result for AB. If it clumped for B, but not A, it would be a positive result for B. If it clumped or agglutinated, I'm saying clump, I'm meaning to say agglutinated for neither A or B, that tells you it's O. So it stays as a solution and it doesn't get all clumpy. So that's how they do the blood typing test. And so you, they can do it really easily at a hospital. And they do it when, if they you give blood, they do it real quick to confirm your blood type.
So now, again, how does uh, how does this affect whether or not you get a certain, you can get or receive a certain blood? So O-type people have A and B antigens floating around in their systems. So at some point in their life, if they're, they came in contact with the A or the B antigen or someone else's blood, which is a high chance of that, their body would have produced these antibodies and have that memory response there waiting. So it's just like an infection. So it's just like you get a vaccine, there is has forms of memory cells for that initial infection. So in your blood, if an O-type person receives B, A, or AB blood, it agglutinates and has a negative reaction. So that's bad. So blood transfusion reactions that agglutinate aren't great. So O-type cannot receive any other blood. O negative means it also can't receive O positive. So O negative can only receive O negative blood. O positive blood can receive O positive and O negative, but not AB or AB. There was a pause between those A and the B. O negative, O positive, these are called the universal, especially O negative, donors. So if you're O type, you can donate to anyone because your body is not going, well, those other people, there's nothing tagged. There's nothing on this O blood type. B type can receive O and B, but not A. A can receive O and A. AB can receive O, A, B, and A, B. This is called the universal acceptor. Receives all the different blood types. So yeah, the uh, HH blood group, also known as OH. Oh yeah, Bombay phenotype, yes. Okay, we can talk about the Bombay phenotype. I was wondering if that's what you're referring to. We can go down this rabbit hole. I like this rabbit hole because it's not specifically coronavirus, we're just learning about blood typing right now. To form this bond, this branch right here. Here, let me circle this branch in pink. To form this branch requires something called compound H or the Bombay phenotype is what this is known as. So this is known as an epistatic trait or so here I'll write it out epistasis. Epistasis is when one gene controls whether or not another gene is seen or not. So if compound H has a mutation, you never form this branch. So it doesn't matter if that person is carrying A or B. If that person is carrying A, you would expect to form this branch and that branch. But this enzyme here that was required to form that branch was never there. So that's what compound H is. Uh, so compound H is this enzyme. And this Bombay phenotype is when this is a mutated form. So this person is actually carrying the genetic information for the A or the B blood type, but they are O. So then when they have children, let's say, that let's draw out these chromosomes. Let's say they're just carrying, let's say when they, their partner does not have that compound H recessive gene in it. So they pass on one that now has it. This is still dominant because this gene over here has a correct compound H. So now that individual, that child is gonna be able to present A or B, but the father would be O or the mother would be O which would be really weird and probably has been on the Maury show before. Your wife is O, you're O, and you have a baby that's A blood type or B blood type. What would you assume? If either of those happen, what would you assume? So two O parents, if you do this cross, you do it as little eyes, do your little Punnett square here, you would expect if each parent was O phenotype, all child, all children, all childs, all children should be O's. But if one of those child came out A, though this one would be A then too, that's a 50% chance of an A phenotype. The phenotype is what you see, but neither parent was A. That's because this parent right here had a recessive form of compound H, but still carried that A gene on one of the chromosomes, or even two. O is, I guess, kind of recessive. Uh, it, it can hide. So yeah, so if you, you could be heterozygous for O. You can carry the O gene. So yeah, the O would be the recessive form within a codominant trait. By the way, I wrote universal acceptor under the captions. So for COVID, there's this paper that came out and said people who are A type produce more symptoms. People who are O type do not. So let's open up a new layer here. So if you are O-type, so O-type carries A and B antibodies. A-type 
carries B antibodies. B type carries A antibodies and AB type work carries no antibodies for A or B. Now, how does this relate to COVID? What this paper suggests, so here, let's, let's hop into the paper. So this gave us, a, I know some of you might not already know blood typing, but we had to go through this little talk here for you to understand the paper we're gonna go over. So this paper, this paper here, again, this is a preprint. This article is a preprint, has not been peer reviewed. What does that mean? It reports new medical research has yet to be evaluated, so it should not be used as a clinical guide. Remember that, what I, we're about to talk about, you don't go run around and make Facebook posts about it saying it's the truth. I understand O doesn't show symptoms, but not sure how it relates because O would react to A or B antigens, but O has no antigens. So how could COVID-19 appear as O to the immune system? Not necessarily that it appears as O, it's actually the opposite is happening here. It appears as A. So if it appears as A, O type people would have A antigens or A antibodies that would attack those antigens. That's what they're saying here. So here, when we drew it over here, I, I won't switch directly to it. Um, so O type carries these A and B antibodies. And it's saying, whereas A type only carries the B antibodies. So it's saying these A antibodies are actually tagging the virus in reducing its symptomatic states. So this paper looked to investigate the relationship between ABO blood groups and COVID-19 susceptibility. It was conducted by comparing, stop popping up there, get away. The study was conducted by comparing the blood group distribution of 2,173 patients, quite a lot of patients with COVID-19 confirmed by SARS-CoV-2 tests from three hospitals. Data were analyzed all from China using one-way ANOVA and two-tailed, don't worry about the statistical means. A total of 1,700 patients, including 206 dead cases, another 113 and 285 patients with this were just, so this is just saying where the people came from. Main outcome, detection of ABO blood groups, infection occurrences, SARS-CoV-2 patient death. Oh, measures. Okay, so the ABO group in 3,700 normal people show a distribution of 32%, 94%, 9%, and 30% of normal people uh, for A, B, A, B, and O. So A was 32%, B was 24.9, A, B was nine. So like I said, A, B is usually the rarest blood type. O is then 33.8%, so the highest percent. O and A are pretty similar here. And then versus the distribution of 37, 26, 10, and 25 respectively in the COVID patients. So the COVID patients, these are important percentages to look at here. 37% were A, 26% were B, 10% AB, and only 25% were O, whereas over here, 33% of the population of 3,700 normal people in the population were O. Okay, the proportion of blood group A and O in infected patients were significantly higher and lower respectively. So look at these comparisons right here. This is what they're looking at. They're comparing uh, this 25% for O that were infected, but a 33% of a normal population was O type. So you'd expect these numbers to be roughly the same. Whereas if we look at A, 32% to 37%, that's not super significant in my mind. So it's suggesting a jump. So if you have A, you could be infected, but if you have O, you have a less chance of being infected. One thing I don't like about statistics is you use the test that gives you the results you want. So this information is way too early to go run around and say A type people are gonna be infected more. You could run a statistics test that says this is no longer significant. I was just gonna go there. Also, if it's an A and O thing, the B group would also not have, would also be carrying those anti-A antibodies. And the B group goes from, it actually increased 24% to 26%. A meta-analysis on the pulled data showed that blood group A had a significantly higher risk for COVID-19. That's a very direct statement for this data compared with non-A blood groups, whereas blood group O has significantly lower risk for infectious disease. In addition, the influence of age and gender on the ABO blood group distribution patients with COVID-19 from two hospitals were analyzed and found that age and gender do not have much effect on distribution and that blood group itself has a bigger effect on different 
distribution. Yeah, so the take home message from this paper is that I am not all for it right now. Yeah, because if it's looking at, you know, higher infection levels are within the same house. So that's more A type are being infected because the initial person was A type. So again, we need to look at more data. Again, this data is going to come out. It's available. I don't know how it's available. I don't, I don't, again, I don't do this research particularly, but usually when they're logging all these patients, they're logging the blood type too. So this data will come out, it will persist. And what they're saying here, let's look into why they're saying this. So we talked about other viruses and these antibodies. So we can go into a little bit more detail in this paper now. So here is why they're saying, or why they went down this route. It was also reported that blood group O individuals are less likely to become infected by SARS coronavirus. We could check that source then if we want. Here we investigated it. So this was like their whole point looking at this. This is citation number four. Cheng and Al, I'm pretty sure this is citation four, reported that SARS-CoV infection, so the original SARS infection susceptibility in Hong Kong was differentiated by ABO blood group systems. Oh, they put the four there too. Uh, the authors found that compared with non-O blood group hospital staff, blood group O hospital staff had a lower chance of getting infected. Patrice A. Al found that anti-A antibodies specifically inhibit the adhesion of SARS-CoV S protein, which is a spike protein, expressing cells to ACE2 expressing cell lines. So this, this suggests that the anti-A antibodies that are floating around in O type, which should also be a B type person's blood, actually tagged the virus, preventing it from binding to ACE2. And they did this, and I'm guessing these ACE2 expressing cell lines meant petri dish, which isn't how it always works in the body. It could be a concentration dependent um, attachment or inhibition as well. This study is very preliminary and like I said, I take it with a grain of salt. I'm quite skeptical about it. Like some of the things uh, Pteranodon was mentioning. One, there could be a higher familiar interaction. So if the first person infected was A-type and their entire family was A-type, that would put that number of A-type people infected. That wouldn't naturally match the normal population they checked. Um, and then the other reason was why isn't the B-type less susceptible? If they're saying it's the A antigen, so here, the lower susceptibility of blood group O and higher susceptibility of blood group A for COVID-19 could be linked to the presence of natural anti-blood group antibodies, particularly anti-A antibody in the blood. So if they're saying, if they're making the statement that anti-A antibody is the reason for this, B-type people would be carrying the anti-A antibody. However, B-type people, when you're comparing the infected versus natural, were actually a higher percent. However, the O-type were much lower. So it's a much more attractive route to compare A versus O instead of A versus B. And then AB would also be an increased susceptibility as well because they don't carry the A-type as well. Exactly, Bunny. So this study may have potential clinical implications. Yeah, I can understand the clinical implications in like that reach, but still, it's too early to make those statements. We need more data. It should be emphasized that due to the limitations discussed above, one should be cautious to use the study to guide clinical practice. Think of the issues that could come up to this. So this is saying O-type people are less susceptible to the virus. So they survive because they have this A-type. However, B-type people also have that A-type, but there is no correlation there. That paper did not explain that difference. That's a big no in my mind, not being able to explain that difference. An AB type should be the similar, should be increased compared to A type. Why were they not compared? So I don't know. Um, this is why I wanted to talk about this paper tonight because it is going to start making headlines as soon as if it does get through the preprint and is actually published.